You know, yesterday was a day where gold prices were up $100, silver prices were up over a dollar, and so the average silver gold co was up one, two, maybe 3% for the good ones. We were up 8%, and it was because we put out these drill results. The Financial Survival Network. Welcome. This is Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz, and joining me once again is my good friend, Sean Kun Kun, President, CEO of Dolly Varden Silver, for a major sponsor update. Sean, you've had a phenomenal run this season. Over 56,000 meters drilled, and now one of the most exciting intercepts anywhere in the Golden Triangle this year. 14.7 14 meters of 26 grams of gold, including a section grading 433 grams over half a meter. That's bonanza by any standard. So let's dig into what's happening at home stake there. So I was up at the project in the summer and I was touring a group of investors, uh, investors from Texas, investors from Boston. So there's a famous mine uh, in the area called the Premier Mine. And the Premier Mine was the most profitable gold mine in North America when it was operating. And, you know, I got the guys at Premier, they carry, they let us come, take us underground. They took us down to the 310 level where this stuff is running 10 ounces per ton. Okay, 10 ounces per ton gold, like 300, over 300 grams of gold. So so I, I'm, I'm starting to make my way back from Premier, back to Vancouver, back to home. But my vice president of exploration is going back to Dolly, going back to site. We get the assays late last week. You know, the news release came out Monday morning. We got the assays late last week and he goes 433 grams per ton. That's what that core that he showed in, that was comparing to this. And so, you know, there was concentrations in this air, in this intercept that, that does span 15 meters that were running as much as 433 grams of gold. And so look, every year we're pulling numbers like this and not every year, every month. Like if you go back to the, like if you took the numbers here, 14 meters, multiply that by 26 grams, right? You get a number of like something better than 350 gram meters. But if you go back to October, we put out a hole that was 120 meters of over three grams. That's also a, like a 350 gram meter hole. And then if you go to September, we had a silver number. Okay, the silver number was 1400 grams of silver over 21 meters. In, in silver, in the silver numbers, that's like 29,000 gram meters of silver. Divide that by 80. Divide that by 80 for the silver to gold ratio. And again, you get about a 350 gram meter gold equivalent, right? This is about fingerprinting areas of the property where we're seeing these rich numbers and going, where else can we get this? And they're looking at potassic alteration, sodium depletion. They're looking at structure. They're looking at geochemistry, geo magnetics. They're, and they're, they're triangulating all of this and it's translating into these rich numbers. How much of this is due to just great science? How much of it is due to the directional drilling uh, capability that you've developed? Yeah, listen, I think that um, the first thing is to just great geological setting. It was an 8 million year process, the SK Rift, and it endowed SK Creek, Bruce Jack, Premier, and our property. And what the directional drilling has allowed us to do, and, you know, not a lot of, you know, it's used a lot in oil and gas, you know, able to kind of horizontally drill p position, pinpoint where you want to go. What we were finding is we were getting frustrated a few seasons ago because we're having to drill these long, expensive holes and they would deviate. You know, we wouldn't hit where the target. And so it was our exploration manager, uh, Amanda Bennett, who said, why don't we use directional drilling? And, you know, I was, you know, I challenged her because I said, isn't that expensive? Because it's it's incrementally more meters. But she said, Sean, she goes, look, if we're, like, I'll give you a number here. If we talk about drilling 56,000 meters because we drilled an equivalent of 56,000 meters, but we actually only had to drill 42,000 of those meters because we're saving. So we're, we're drilling a, a, a mother hole and then we're fanning out the daughter holes. The first bit we don't have to drill. So... It's, it's been a game changer. It's good rocks. It's good science. It's good techniques. And it's, it's trying to improve. And, but again, at the end of the day, 
it's a well-endowed property and we got a lot of ground now. Carrie, we were very active this year doing acquisitions, so we've got a lot of ground to explore. The significance and the, uh, the strategy of acquiring Homestake from Fury has just uh, been a nonstop uh, performer here. One thing I want to get across to your audience is, you know, some people are like, okay, you know, you've been going, you've been drilling, we're going to drill for the next five more years. No, that's not the plan. The plan now is we are looking at creative ways to give our shareholders exposure to production. And so, you know, one of the things that we've done, our business has been built on three pillars. Pillar number one was bringing $185 million of capital. You know, capital is the oxygen that these mining companies need to advance. We've done that in an elegant way. We've never done a down round. We've done that in a way that we've limited dilution and we've got the money from great investors, Hecla, Eric Sprott, Fidelity, et cetera. So pillar one, bringing in capital. Pillar two, Leveraging that science I talked about, you know, the expansion, the extension, the great geology, you know, it's, I can transfer wealth. I can't create it. My scientists can create it through their discoveries, through the increasing the mineral inventory. Well, now what, Kerry? The third pillar of the business is the acquisitions. We've made five acquisitions. Now, our focus up until this point has been acquiring prospective ground and acquiring past producing mines. We're up to five past producing historic silver mines in the Golden Triangle. The next step that I'm challenging myself to do is now it's time to focus on operations. How quickly can we get this material through a production facility? What production facility? Do we build one? Do we permit it ourselves? Do we, you know, do we build the tailings in the mill or is there a better way? Is there a way to direct shift this high grade? Is there a way to cut CapEx, reduce permitting timelines? Um, and is there other companies where there's synergies where if we come together to create a larger entity, a go-to name in the mining space, can Dolly Varden become the next Hecla, the next Pan American? So, you know, stay tuned. We've got some plans that are coming that we're looking to um, execute on shortly. We've got 80 drill holes to still report. And if they're anything like the ones we've already put out so far this year, you know, you know, yesterday was a day where gold prices were up $100, silver prices were up over a dollar. And so the average silver gold co was up one, two, maybe 3% for the good ones. We were up 8% and it was because we put out these drill results. So drill results matter and we've got 80 more holes to come. So 80 more holes we're waiting for results. Um, is drill season uh, complete now, or we still got a little more to go? Drill season is complete. Um, it wouldn't surprise me for us to convert a lot of our inferred ounces on the gold side. And there are different categories in an estimate. And the tighter space drilling you do, the more confidence you have around your estimates. And so what we're, what we've done is particularly at home state, Carrie, is we've done some of that tighter space drilling. And what we found was we were actually pleasantly surprised that the grade is a lot richer. So I think there's a chance of like a 50% increase in the grade at home stake from the word to what we convert into the indicated category. So I'm looking for a 50% increase in number of silver ounces. I'm looking for a 50% increase in grade on the gold side. And it's on the back of results like we just put out. Sean, we'll be talking to you soon and get some more updates. Looking forward to finding out what's in the remainder of those holes. Thanks for having me on, Gary. The Financial Survival Network.